Now, everybody's a little bit different in life, but for me, when it comes to Valheim, I like to build big. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over my new mega build, which I've been calling the Citadel. This build took me over 80 hours to complete. There are over 21,000 pieces placed in the final build and over 100 meters of height and elevation in total. It also takes inspiration from the landscape of Minas Tirith and the Lord of the Rings and even a courtyard from Hogwarts Castle from Harry Potter. So much to talk about, let's get started. Welcome to the ci oh I forgot to close the gate. Welcome to the Citadel. Here, of course, we're going to get started at the front entrance where I've got a massive wall. This wall is 14 meters tall, not even including the roof, which is pretty cool. Kind of gives you a sense of scale of this build. <clears throat> of this build right at the start. And you can see here as we get a little closer how many details there actually are in this wall. A lot of layering here to add those details. Along with the details in this wall, we've also got a lot of functionality. You can access the bottom and you can also access the top. We'll be checking out both of those in just a minute. But you can also see the roof that I decided to put on here is very detailed. Uh, honestly, it uses a lot of instances, so I probably shouldn't have done it, but you can also see that we've got a pretty cool front entrance here where I'm once again detailing by using a lot of layering, really trying to emphasize that doorway. But let's break this down a little bit more and kind of tell you how I built the wall itself. Before starting the wall, I did what I do for every build. Just like a real architect, I built a blueprint. To do this, I cleared the landscape and I laid out a plan for the entire build over the ground where I would be working. It's one of those things where if you know the end before the beginning, it's way easier to write the story. Now you can see here, I have a large semicircle in the blueprint for the wall. To fill this semicircle in, I began by working on a single segment of the wall that could be copied to the rest. I first built a simple shape and then I tried to add as much depth or layering as possible for details with seven or so layers of textures going from the front to the back of the design. After that, I scaled up the design to the final size of 14 meters tall and I even added a roof. For the roof, I used supporting poles that have four core wood poles for thickness and they poke up through the roof to add some structure at the very top. After this, I was happy with the design for a single segment of wall, so I copied the design around the wall, creating a massive structure. This was admittedly way too big, coming in at 15,000 instances before I built any of the rest of the build. So I scaled it way down by taking out the sides and replacing them by bringing out the cliff instead. Also, I needed towers on the ends. And I actually used the tower that I created later on and I copied that and brought it over to the wall. I then finished it all up by adding in a door, once again by using many layers to add in some nice details. All right, that is the wall. Let's go ahead and head into one of my favorite views in the... Wait, actually, you know what? Wait, wait, wait. Let's finish up with the wall before we move on to anything else. All right, so let's head through this entrance and you can see that we've got a nice little workshop down here in the bottom, workbench, forge, everything you need to repair some weapons and armor. But what you could see down low, down this hallway, is actually a really chill space. This is maybe more for like the regular old people of, well, not, <laughs> not old people, but I mean like the regular people living in the Citadel, they could come over here and relax. You can see this side of the wall is kind of opened up so they have like a view and some sunshine is coming through so we're gonna go ahead and head up this staircase this is for the soldiers so that they can come over from the army barracks right onto the top of the wall immediately in case of an emergency i don't really know why i put three here uh yeah i guess i just thought it looked cool you really only need the one but yeah interesting idea as we head down the wall though you can see how massive this wall is you know i guess i don't really have any you know knowledge on defending a city but I would think that a large space up here, a lot of room for activities, might be something that would be really beneficial. 
nice view of the ocean as well i guess you could say but let's head to the end and here at the end you can see we once again have uh, multiple portals where you only need one and a nice little workshop down low and a little hallway for the citizens of the citadel let's head back to the front entrance all right the front entrance as we head through you can see one of my favorite views of the whole build now the first thing you see when you come through well it's probably the keep in the background but for me, at least, it's this area here with this big change in elevation and the water down below and the bridges going across. I love this area. Let me quickly explain how I built this. For the water area, you'll notice that I'm working with some very deep elevations. If you want to do this in your own world, you can absolutely go right ahead. You just have to choose the right location, making sure you are close enough to water, for example, to actually see it in the hole. For me, since I'm building on such a large scale though, I used a mod called Height Map Mod, which removes the terrain limitations in the game so that I can go as deep as I want. In theory, you could even build a recreation of the landscape of Minas Tirith with the massive stone feature that sticks out over the city with this mod. While you won't see that in this build, you will see a massive mountain range in the background, which is supposed to feel similar to Minas Tirith. Also, if you are a fan of Lord of the Rings and the Tolkien universe, you should check out my last build of Khazad Doom or the Mines of Moria, which is the largest underground build ever done in Valheim. But anyway, for building the bridges and walkways, you can see that I started by filling in my original blueprint with a basic shape, mostly of large black marble floor pieces. After this, I went through and supported the structure with large black marble poles. In a recent video, I talked about how spawning in these two pieces and using them instead of using many smaller pieces will help you reduce lag in massive builds. Finally, I finished it up by adding in some handrails along the paths and different elevations, and also by designing a quick custom lamp post that I could use here and throughout the rest of the build. All right, so the water area. You can see we've got a nice little change in elevation here, which just makes it a little bit more interesting. Over here, as we get to the center, you can see the handrail designs that I came up with. You can see the custom lamp post. And if I back up a little bit, actually, you can see how the walkway semicircle design really matches the semicircle design of the wall and even the area down low is a semicircle as well so it just kind of like makes the whole area feel like it really matches but yeah you've already seen how the path works it heads over into the side towers it gives you access to the front entrance and it also gives you access to the main keep which I'll go ahead and give you a breakdown of how I built it right now for the main keep, I started once again by filling in my basic blueprint with just a basic shape, taking advantage of those two large black marble pieces discussed earlier. For the keep, I knew that for one, I wanted a massive build so that I could create a really cool throne room on the inside, and I also knew that two, I wanted some massive pillars on the outside of the building with larger ones around the main doorway. Going off of these two basic ideas, I decided on the height of everything and I completed filling in a basic shape for the build. After that, I finished it up by adding on a roof, which was a huge pain to be completely honest. A roof of this size is notoriously easy to under decorate or under develop. So I got to work doing some tests, but I honestly did not like what I had come up with and I did what I do for a lot of builds and I quit. No, I'm kidding. I worked on some other stuff for a while and I came back with a fresh mind. What I came up with when I came back was this design here which uses layered lines going up across the roof and also uses a secondary roof feature to replace the very top. All right, so the main keep. I did want to build some larger pillars around the front entrance so you can see they're a little bit larger here on the front uh, we've got the same front entrance as the main wall and as we go upwards you're going to see this little strip going down the wall which is honestly turned out to be one of my favorite details here it's just got this little like sun design on the inside as we get a little closer just like with the main wall you can see for the detailing i did a lot of layering so we've got like four or five different layers here it kind of just gets more and more interesting whoops <laughs> the closer that you get 
Uh, and then on the sides, of course, we've got these really tall circular towers. Just like with the walls, the closer you get, the more you can see the differences in depth and uh, with all the different layers but let's head inside so that you can see the throne room this interior is just something else i don't know if i've ever seen ceilings this tall in valheim as you come down the hallway it almost feels like game of thrones or something there's a little lowered area here for kind of emphasizing the walkway you've got a pathway on the side with some arches you can walk under and some benches but of course, the main feature here in this hall is the actual throne area. There's three different elevations, which is pretty cool, coming up to where the king and the queen would sit. Maybe you've got some other royal visitors here as well, which want to sit up here at the top. Ballistas in case everything went bad, and even a tree in the background, because why not? You've got some rocks on the side, and we'll come back to this doorway, but you can see that I really like to use the terrain in my builds. This is just another way that I save instances. But here you can see we've got a doorway which just heads out into the courtyard. And we've also got a way to go right which heads into a dining hall. And everything over here on this side, the courtyard, the dining hall, it all kind of fits under the same umbrella for me. So let's talk about how I built the side area. The whole side area is pretty cool. I originally planned to have a dining room next to a tower with an army barracks on the bottom and a living space for the royal family on the top, and even a courtyard out in front of it all. I even planned to have a small hidden peaceful garden to sit in and read a book in on the side. But like with all big plans, there were some complications. After building the first part, the dining hall, and closing it in, I realized it was a big box but I decided it would be best to just keep on building at the moment, and also, I already built the interior, so it's kinda locked in. Whoops. Nice. Next, I decided to build the courtyard, which is inspired from Harry Potter. You might remember Malfoy getting turned into a ferret or Ron eating slugs. I mostly completed the courtyard by copying and bringing over the roof from the main wall for the actual covered walkway. And I also went ahead and added a nice path through the grass and a little campfire area that you could hang out in. After completing the courtyard, I got to work on the tower by first moving the tower over 14 meters. This meant that I could create a bridge, which would for one, just be kind of cool, but also two, would fix my problem of having nothing to put on top of the dining hall. I could also then use the gap underneath the bridge for another secret garden, and I shifted the original secret garden around the corner of the courtyard to be out of the way. Then I went ahead and built the bridges to make sure that I could line them up nicely with the shape of the tower before I committed to any tower details. The bridges started off being overcomplicated with two on top of each other and were quickly simplified to just one bridge for a less messy look. Then I added a roof to the bridge and I even added a staircase to cut through the mountain behind the main keep. I then went back and finished up the tower by adding in layering for detailing and windows and arched doorways for functionality. All right, so first thing I wanted to show you in this side area is the dining hall. You can see that we've got some nice arch details on the ceiling to kind of bring the whole room inwards. We've got a little fireplace here, stone ovens, plenty of things you could do for some cooking. Nice little area here for some mead. Over here, we've got another raised area. You know, I'm really working with elevation a lot in this project. We've got the different elevation for the pathway, different elevation for the kitchen, and then the different elevation for the dining hall here. Little like cubbies in the back wall. I'm not sure what else you would call those, uh, where we've got some iron cage pieces and some barrels, storage up top. We've got barrels and crates all over the place. I'll put those IDs on screen if you wanna spawn those in and use them in your world. And up above us here, we have the bridge and the little extra secret garden. You know, I probably could have done something else, honestly, in hindsight here, but I just really like the idea of a little cozy kind of side garden where you could sit and relax and, you know, read a book. I don't know. Here in the army barracks, we've got two floors, kind of three floors because there's a little bit of a loft here. 
We've got a couple of beds here, a couple of bunk beds on the side, some storage. Up here in the loft, we do have kind of a small armory. You know, once again, those big arches on the side to bring in the ceiling a little bit. We've got a nice little shield workshop here where you can maybe repair and make shields. Storage on the side, weapon storage here, and even some armor storage on this side and a cartography table. On the next floor up, we have the rest of the army barracks where they could kind of defend in case they needed to, or maybe like yell over to the wall. I don't, I don't know if that's too far, but I feel like they could maybe communicate with some megaphones or something. I don't know. Uh, but here in this floor, you can see they've, they've got some hammers, a place to repair some ballistas, a uh, spare ballista back here. And this is where their portals are, so they can go immediately over to the wall. They've got a cartography table here and another four bunk beds. Heading back down to the bottom floor of the army barracks, we have the exit, which heads out into the courtyard. Here we've got the original secret garden, which I had to kind of shift over. And we've got the access underneath the kind of walkway. I love how this turned out. I actually just stole the uh, roof from the main wall, which I think is pretty cool. And you can see we can come out underneath the roof and we can see the nice little lowered pathway here, which is just dirt and also a really cool little campfire area with like different elevations of wood, places to sit, even a bench in the back. And yeah, just a really cool little kind of asymmetrical area here for a campfire. Now I did kind of have one little extra area over here on the side of the courtyard and I thought it'd be cool to actually add some access to the water area itself. So you know there's a little raft here where you can enjoy the water, you could fish, you could swim, uh, you know just all sorts of little things and I thought it'd be cool to actually uh, just make this area functional. All right, so here in the throne room, there was a secret doorway here on the side. Well, it's not very secret, but actually there is a little bit of a secret. We've got a portal here behind the thrones, and this would lead you directly into the royal family quarters where they could go home quickly if they needed to and change the name of the portal so nobody could follow them. Or they could take the normal pathway, which is this massive staircase here in the back. I love how this staircase came out. Really kind of a raw staircase, rocks and stones leading you all the way up through the mountain. As we head up the stairs, you can go off the side here where we've got a view down on the throne room, which actually looks pretty cool if you look back up this way. And we also have a little bridge area here. If you've put it together already, this is the top of the dining hall. This is what I ended up doing here. There's a whole bridge. There's a view of the throne room. We've got a little lookout here, which looks down to the courtyard, which is pretty cool. We've even got an area here which looks across to the top of the army barracks. And you've even got a little hallway back here where you could sit and relax and kind of read a book. Pretty cool little area here on top of the dining hall. Really happy with what I was able to actually do with this space. But let's go ahead and check out the lookout tower. Now the lookout tower, admittedly, I <laughs> I was already at 21,000 instances. So I really didn't make this functional or anything. The lookout tower is more for the looks overall of the kingdom. Just having a tower up there on that back mountain really, I think, kind of brings it all together. So that's it for the lookout tower. But as we head back down, through the trees up here, we can head into the royal family quarters. Now, as we go in first room, you're going to see is pretty small. We're in kind of the skinny part of the tower. So we've got a little bit of storage here on the sides and kind of an area where they could sit, take off their boots after a long day, uh, you know, store their earnings for the day or something. I don't know. Uh, and there's a little portal here, which leads directly into the throne room. Now on the second floor, it is still pretty small. So I decided just to make it into kind of like a little library with a bookshelf and some signs and also another bookshelf over here with more signs and some things and little places to sit and read but as we go up to the top floor this is when we had a little bit more space to work with here and you've got a really tall roof which is pretty cool you've got some storage here and we've even got a little dining room here and a bedroom much appreciated for checking out the video. I have plenty of other Valheim content on the channel. Check it out maybe if you want. Thanks for watching. More coming soon, and I'll see you in the next one.